Uh, let's talk about functional groups. So what's a functional group? Um, we already know what uh, a class is, I believe. So a class of compounds is basically a type of compound. Now when you talk about functional groups, they refer to a group of atoms, okay? Or a bonding sequence in a given compound. So basically, functionally, if you talk about what a functional group is, it determines the chemical properties of that compound. So for example, when you see a carbon double bonded to oxygen, irrespective of the compound where you see this, this will react in a similar way. So we call that a functional group. It affects the chemical properties of a compound, irrespective of the compound it is found in. Okay? So when they ask you to, to identify a functional group, there should be a group that is connected in a certain way. Okay? It may be just two atoms or even more than two, as we'll see. Okay, so in this video we'll be listing them, identifying them and recognizing the classes of compounds where we get to find them. So I'll start with the simpler ones even as we get to advance. Okay, so something interesting is uh, when you see, uh, of all these ones are not usually recommended, but I'll just try to name them for the sake of naming them. So when you see a double bond between the carbon atoms, so this occurs in alkenes, right? This occurs in alkenes. So this is a double bond. Okay? So a double bond has got effects on the chemical properties of alkenes. Okay? So the classes of the compounds, they are called alkenes. Okay? So we'll call a function group just a double bond. There's nothing, there's no special name we have. And then when you have a triple bond, what are these compounds called? So we'll call this a triple bond. The class of that compound is called what? They're called alkynes. Okay, so that's a class. There we're saying the called alkynes. <coughs> and then we also have the, the OH, which I believe you understand is a class. The classes are called alcohols. Okay, so as a functional group, it's known as the hydroxyl group. <coughs> now, this is a common one. So I can actually even start from scratch. I like it very much. This is a very common functional group. Okay. So we'll start in a case where it is at the end, meaning that there's a hydrogen, and then the side you've got other carbons connected. So Instead of showing the different carbons connected, you can just put an arrow. So where there's an arrow group in it gets there's a chain of carbon atoms connected to it. Okay. So this functional group, whenever you see a carbon connected to oxygen double bonded to that, what functional group is that? So a functional group itself is called the the carbonyl group. Okay. Carbonyl group is the functional group. The class, so when, it, when this occurs at the end, it's called, falls under a class called aldehydes. Okay? In a case where it is in between, meaning that there's no carbon, there's no hydrogen on any end, so it's another group on both sides, meaning that it's occurring not at the terminal part, but internally. The functional group is still carbonyl, Take note, but the class, the class, what, what, are we, what are we calling the class? So the class here becomes ketones. Okay. And then what else? We can talk about another deleted group. So if we see carbon double bonded to oxygen plus the hydroxyl group or an alcohol. This changes. It's no longer a carbonyl group alone. It's now 
a carboxyl group okay the class this is what makes up what we call carboxylic acids carboxylic acids okay we can move <coughs> let's consider a case where we have an NH2 so NH2 this is called an amino group so it's a functional group called amino group and then the class these ones are called amines okay I'm sure you've noticed the way the groups are ending amino group carbonyl group carboxyl group okay and then of course we just for the sake of mentioning them we may have cases where you've got allergens connecting and what and what not so if it's fluorine it's fluoro as a substituent and then the class these are called allides okay allides basically now there are a few things that we've not yet talked about groups like amide okay so what's an amide how is it different from the amino so when you look at an amide group for the amide the NH2 is still present or not necessarily present but the key thing is there is a double bond to oxygen and then there is the nitrogen so this nitrogen may be an amino it may be NH2 as it is or it may even be connected to other different uh, two things okay the key term is whenever you see a carbon connected to a nitrogen that forms the amide group okay amide so I think the functional group should be called amido and then the, the class amides let me just make a confirmation that of it's been a while does a mido group exist a mido group okay so it does exist so it's got an mido group then the other classes of compounds we've not talked about is we've, talk, we've not talked about the esters right so there's a special case where you have an oxygen in between two carbon atoms like that and then there's a special one where you've got double bond oxygen and then another oxygen this side and then you may have carbons connected from both ends okay so there we have an ester and an ether so which one is the ester and then which one is an ether so in a case where we've got the top part is called an ether the one below is called an ester okay so an ester and an ether are functional classes okay so those are the classes now what are the functional groups so for the ethers as you can see the function group is that oxygen with two single bonds okay for the esters it's a carbon group connected to a single oxygen so for your research i want you to research and get if there is any special name for their functional groups <laughs>